center. I think so. How do I get it? Stick it. Oh, there we go. I'm going to need to turn it down all the way. Okay. How do I get it? Oh. Two views already. Candy. Lex. Lex, how are you doing, buddy? Who are we looking at? Hold on, we got to turn this down. Oh, I can't see that far. Lex is like my favorite. Hi, Tara. Lex is my favorite in the world. How you doing? So how do we do the thing where we can... So if... Okay. Did you title it 9-11? Yeah, I did. Hello, everybody. <laughs> so today is 9-11. And, um... 11. We, uh... Have five views. Daniel had asked to look on the, the calendar to see what date it was. And, um, I looked and it was 9-11. I'm like... Okay, so that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, it is. It is crazy. September 11th. I want to say, Lex, I really miss you, like, a lot. Just saying that. Okay. Just because he said hi. So, um. We wanted to get on here and we wanted to pray for anybody who wants prayer. Mm -hmm. um, we, we were looking for some scriptures that were 9 11. Yeah. And, um. So, does anyone need prayer first? Yeah, any prayer request. It's been a while since we've been on here. Yeah, it's been a long... It's been like a... A month? Maybe longer. longer. It's been longer. Wow. It's, it hasn't been like... I think... This is going to get annoying. It's, okay. been, it's been much longer. So... Um, Six people. All right, well, in the meantime, um, I'll share a pretty cool... Why does that say invite? I don't know why it does that. Okay. I, it, Kevin's did that too. Fire for you? Okay, you're the fire guy. All right, that's for Tara. All right, so Father, in the name of Yahshua, the name of Jesus, I ask for your Holy Spirit to release fresh fire on Tara. Amen. In Jesus' name, God. Amen. In Amen. Jesus. And Tara, it's so funny because I was just, I was talking, I was thinking about you today. I was talking to Papa about you, and, and what an honor it is to know you, and um. Your mighty story and so I'm just excited that God brought um, you across my path and I got to meet you so fire <laughs> more of God's presence and power in Jesus name these are all the people so yeah um, so I'll just share what happened to me just like with the song uh, over the weekend I was with my friend Kevin and we went to Albany, New York. And as I was in Albany, we were out to eat. And uh, I, like, thought of a song in my head. And and I started changing the lyrics of the song. It was like, I heard the melody or the tune. And then I tried to change the lyrics. And then, like, uh, right after that, then the song played in the, in the rate. Like, while we were eating, it's just, like, two minutes later, it started playing. I'm like, what? So that was really cool. It was, um... Really interesting. So that was really cool. Well, what was the song? And you didn't sing it, and you didn't change the lyrics, and you only gave a little bit of information. Okay. Didn't Marty tell? Okay. <laughs> um, to be honest, I'm pretty nervous. So oh, I don't remember. Oh goodness. Uh, what was the song? The lyrics were my. Oh, okay. So it was a song. Oh, let it rock, let it roll. It, it was a song like Jack and Diane. Uh, anyhow. Uh, the lyrics that I made was, uh, Jesus is my rock, Holy Spirit flow, Father God loves you and he can save your soul. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. Miss Marie. Hi, Miss Marie. How you yeah. doing? Watching for Kevin's healing prayer. When? When is that? Is he scheduled to go live? <laughs> I know, right? Is he scheduled out? He probably is, isn't he? Oh no! We're we're running in his in his airtime. Oh no! Oh no! So, um, Lex, is there anything I could pray for you for? Are you still on here, Lex? Oh, this evening. What time? What? <laughs> At eight o'clock. What time is it? Oh. Oh, it's 10 minutes he's going to be oh, on. Oh, 10 minutes. All okay. of our friends are going to be dropping I off. I know. <laughs> <No. laughs> 
<laughs> All right, so if you are watching this, I do encourage you to uh, go watch Kevin's. Right. Yeah. Just saying. Because we love Kevin, and he rocks, and yeah. he's awesome. Yeah. So, definitely a powerhouse. So, we're just like the commercial. Yeah, we're, we're the, the commercial to bring Kevin over. <laughs> we're Kevin's pre-show. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's, that's it. So, anyhow, we were looking up some 9-11 scriptures, and I'll give those real quick. So, I heard the Lord say Amos 9-11. So, it says, on that day, I will raise up the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down, and repair its damages. I will raise up its ruins and rebuild it as in the days of old. Who's Kevin? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Tara, you will absolutely love Kevin. Kevin Reardon. Reardon. R-I-O-R-D-A-N. Yes. Reardon. <laughs> but it's not, Rear, it's not pronounced like that. That's how it's spelled. Ah! I'm the front Dan. He's the rear Dan. Yeah, so go find him. Um, um, Set Free Ministries is there. Did it stop? Uh, did it? it? It must have for a second. So, yeah, go to... It is Set Free Ministries. So, Kevin Reardon, and it's um, R-I-O-R-D-A-O-N. O-N. Uh, yeah. Reardon. 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 Yeah. But you will love him. He's absolutely amazing. So you don't want to miss that. So go there. We're just the pre-show. <laughs> we're just the pre-show for Kevin Reardon. <laughs> but this right here, we were looking up a bunch of 9-11 um, because it's 9-11. <laughs> Why not? Why not, right? So Matthew 9-11, when the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? And, you know, we were just talking how the religious spirit, like, separates mm -hmm. itself from the very people that Jesus sat with and he had around him and surround him. And it's like we have it backwards that you can recognize the smell of a religious spirit whenever they elevate themselves above who Jesus hung out with. I mean, right. tax collectors and sinners. Yeah. No, so um, Matthew nine eleven, that's a good one to remember. Yes. And then um, another one is Genesis nine eleven. It's a, uh, thus I establish my covenant with you. Never again shall all flesh be cut off by my waters of the flood. Never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. So I thought that was very interesting, as um, as all the flooding is going on, you know, and we have to remember that as we pray for them, pray for the floods. I believe that so much prayer went forth and that's what um, stopped so much damage and catastrophic, um, gosh, events in Florida is right. the prayer. Yeah. But 9-11. So does anybody need prayer? Hi, Tammy and Matt. Hello. Love you guys. It's awesome. Hi, Estelle. How are you? Stella. Estelle. Estella. 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 So does anybody need prayer before Kevin comes Yeah, home? yeah. I mean, we're, we're warming up. Does anyone need prayer, pre-prayer for Kevin? Love you too. Ah. <laughs> okay. Uh, what else? What else? Is, you know, um, this weekend, I'm sure Kevin will talk about it. Uh, what blows my mind is how much the church is bound up as far as needing deliverance and how much the church is afraid of even uh, confronting uh, the spiritual aspect of freedom. Um, there was a, a friend uh, that I know that um, was was in the like did yoga and um, she she's on fire she doesn't want she she like when she became a Christian, she was doing the yoga and she started having like creepy feeling, like and feeling like things are like watching her and feeling her. She even felt like things on her arm. And like, so like she stopped going, but like, you know, that just cause you stop going doesn't mean there's, you know, well anyhow, um, Kevin ended up praying for this girl and she got free and like, he just simply had her renounce, like, uh, worshiping Hindu gods. Hi, Stephen. And, and idolatry. And, uh, 
Hi, Steven. And um, had her renounce witchcraft, had her renounce uh, Kundalini spirit, and one by one, uh, he commanded those things to go. And and it, we were doing like a drive by, so we we're driving down the road, and he's commanding things out, and, and things are leaving. So as just, he's driving, as he's driving, right? You know, so, and that's so true. The church does not realize that like you had said that the authority and the power that we have is we sons and daughters. Right. Yeah. And I and. I, Another thing that clicked for me today is like it's so easy to see something be healed. Like if I seen a leg grow, it's easy to see a leg grow because I seen it, you know. And and that's a confidence of knowing that it's already happened. Um, and that's a con like so. I guess if we put that confidence in knowing who we are, right? We will see more. And it's true. Yeah. It's true. Well, that's what another uh, two, two more 9-11s is Luke 9-11. But the crowds learned about it and followed him. He welcomed them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God and healed those who needed healing. So that's what Jesus would do. He would just preach and he would heal. You yeah. know, he would he would preach and he would heal. And mm -hmm. and we we have that backwards as the church. We go get filled and then we go to bed. That's what we do. <laughs> or uh, we forget that we need to pour ourselves back out. So let's pray for Leon. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Jeff. And you love you, Janine. Sorry, I'm just reading. <laughs> Hi, Janine. Love you. Okay. Yeah. So, Jeff. no, because um, Miss Marie asked if we would have healing prayer for Leon. Who's Leon? Uh, shit's what she put on there. A healing? Who is Leon? Leon? I, I don't. Oh. Miss Marie, who's Leon? He yeah. wants to know. I he was, was too busy talking. I, I was too busy. <laughs> he was in a preach. <laughs> the truth. Okay, yeah. So uh, if you... We'll just wait for that. There's a 10 second delay. So. Okay, so... And then I'm going to say John 9-11. Whenever okay. we get there. All right, well, why don't you say it now? Okay, and I'm going to read John 9-11 as well. He replied, The man they called Jesus made some mud and put it in my eyes. He told me to go to Salome and wash so I went and washed and then I could see so you have Jesus doing something so childlike yeah he played in the mud he made mud by <laughs> <laughs> and he healed a man but the man didn't get instant healing <laughs> can you wait uh, he, he got mud in his eyes how can you even see you can't how can you even see when you have mud in your eyes well, you, you know? couldn't see in the beginning so that's so true. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> that didn't work out. <laughs> so, anyhow. Uh, Liam, my brother. Liam, she is... What's this say? My brother. Lynn's and Addison's... Disney. Limes. Lime Limes disease. and Addison's disease. Needs prayer to walk in total... Is that the same? That's a different person. Oh, yeah. No. Hi, Lisa. How you doing, girl? So, this one needs prayer to walk in total breath. God. Is this a comedy? Well, you never know what you're going to get when you have us talking. You never know. <laughs> Y'all never know. Like, <laughs> We're so, trying to be serious. There's so many different things this happening. Is, this is spontaneity <laughs> to the greatest. No. Right. Okay, it's so, like, Jesus, we need your inspiration. Yeah, right. Come so, back, Holy Spirit. Who says that, Kevin? Kevin says He's that. like, come back, Holy Spirit. <laughs> so, it's... Leon, my brother. Total breath of God manifested healing from asthma. Okay, so asthma and Lyme disease? Is that what your brother, he has all three of those? Okay. Okay. You want to go first? No, you go first. Okay, so Father, I thank you right now for Leon. Lord, we speak life into his body. Breathe a breath of God into Leon right now. Yes, Lord. Father, we just give you glory. We're going to pray for your reading. And um, Lord, we just ask right now that you breathe new life into him. Lord, I thank you for your fire, God. I thank you for your consuming fire that will touch him and heal him. And just, we command healing into his body now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Okay, so... Yeah. Breath. All right, so we speak right now in the name of Jesus. I speak life over his lungs. I command any asthma to come out of his body in the name of Jesus. I break any curse that causes asthma in the name of Jesus. And uh, 
I speak to Lyme disease. Uh, Spirit of Lyme, I command the Lyme to come out in the name of Jesus. And Father, I just pray that every cell that was damaged from Lyme to be restored in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, you said that you sent your word and they were healed. So, Father, we send your word right now to Leon. And I pray for a Holy Spirit encounter over him, Father, from head to toe. Just touch him in Jesus' name. In Jesus' Amen. name. So, what does that mean, Miss Marie? You're going to pray for our reading. Pray for your reading. Is that an insult? <laughs> no. What? Say what? Okay, I had another. I had a couple more 9-11s. You know, we were, we were, I was. Hi, Jordan. Okay, sorry. Amen. Um, Amen. So, 9-11, my daughters and my kids and I used to watch uh, Rescue 911. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes we have a Rescue 911. It's an emergency, and we just need the power of the Holy Spirit to just show up on the scene and bring the healing, you know. And it was interesting. Oh, I didn't even know that. <laughs> you just like smack. <laughs> But today it's 9/11, right? And we just got the um, the revelation that it's 9/11. There was an ambulance out there today. And hi, Stacy. Hi, Stacy. And I don't even know what, what it was for, but it was just like, you know, I was praying, of course, for them. Um, but it's like, Holy Spirit is right there with us, and it's He is our rescue 911. Yeah. He is our rescue 911. Okay, so. Um. Nehemiah 9:11 You divided the sea before them so that they passed through from it they passed through it on dry ground but you hurled their pursuers into the depths like a stone into mighty waters So you know the rescue 9:11 is Hi Lauren love you girl The rescue 9:11 is think about that you know they're being set free they're finally the Israelis are finally being set free Pharaoh finally let them go. They, they experienced all this devastation, you know, all the firstborn dying and the plagues and all that stuff. And now they have a rescue 911, but then they come to this situation where now they have to cross this Red Sea. What the heck? How's that gonna happen? You know what I mean? And now their pursuers are behind them. And this miracle happens where the sea parts. I mean, can you imagine? The sea parts. But see, that's what you were saying. Imagine if you saw somebody's leg growing back, the faith that you would have to believe to believe for the next powerful right. miracle you know what I mean so here they are they saw the sea part I can't even like I couldn't have fathomed I'm sitting there wondering how the blind guy went with mud in his eye how he saw to go wash you know, right, right. On that one. <laughs> but right. I'm a little slow I gotta ponder these things but the sea like it parted and the ground wasn't even wet it wasn't even muddy like they didn't even get and think about the carts of a wheel right did you ever try to push like a cart, a buggy in like a parking lot and there's like asphalt and it's broken up. Oh yeah, it's hard. It's and like, it's really hard. Yeah. And so just imagine they had carts on these these chariots and not one of them perished, you know? And they all went through to dry land and the next thing you know, door closes, too bad for the pursuer pursuers, you know, and, and that's a mighty 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 miracle. So, and we got to believe that we serve the same God who did that. Like he will part Red Seas for us and maybe not naturally we'll walk through it, but supernaturally he goes before us and he prepares the way and he parts those Red Seas. He is our rescue 911. Yeah. Absolutely. What do you have to say, Daniel? Thank you, Jeff. Yeah. That's what we were talking That's about. We have not. Thank you. Because yeah. we are a little bit of a comedy. Yeah, a little <laughs> bit. It's so like spontaneous. Yeah. But it's like, even in, even through it, the Holy Spirit orchestrates it and kind of threads it together. And we're like, dude, that's awesome. So thank you for saying that. Yeah. Yeah. What were you going to say? Nothing. Oh, you're, you're, you're so full of words. I'm so full of words. No, I'll be honest. This stuff makes me nervous. Why? Like, I don't know. Just, I don't know. Well, guess what? That's face what? your fears. Yeah, face my fears. That's be exactly brave. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, a side note. Uh, I got to hang out with a guy that was tripping yesterday. So I'm tripping like... right now. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, for real. I'm being serious. Yeah. Explain. Uh, explain. I was at church. Uh, I was in Albany, New York. And as I was in Albany, this guy walked in. And we thought he was drunk. Um, and Kevin prayed for him for like sobriety and stuff. 
And Kevin had to like do the service, but I stayed out with the guy, and he was really funny. Like, and I was amazed like how quick his mind was reacting. If you're drunk, it's very slow and slurry. But like his mind was really there. But but you could tell like he was he was like from one moment he would come in like he came in he said this is glory house of hope it's actually glory house of prayer but he said is this glory house of hope he's like i need help wow and then like we all come over and pray for him we're like sit down he's like like he's like getting his guard up <laughs> you know <laughs> and we're like no it's okay were it's you okay. laughing i i was inside I was you know laughing. i would so be laughing I'd be like, <laughs> yeah so, and then, like, some guy would walk walk in, like, you again. You know, like, he was, like, <laughs> tripping. And, and like, so, like, I don't know. I would get water, and he'd be like, are you giving me vodka? <laughs> <laughs> you should have been, like, tripping with him, like, uh, yeah, here. Uh, right, right. No, I so, guess. like, I ended up just, like, hanging out with him, told him my life story. Um, prayed for him. And I uh, ended up, like, that took a while. And got his number, um, and then I, I I walked him. He had to walk home, so I, I walked him across the street so he could at least don't have to go across this main highway. Like, oh, that tripping. was nice of you. Yeah. How did you walk him? Did he just follow you? No, no, he walked, and I walked beside him. Yeah. Did he tell everybody bye? Did he know he was leaving? Was yeah. he down from yeah. the high then? No, he was still. And you guys did we command sobriety over yes. him. Yes, we we we. Encouraged him to go straight home and and to really thank Rita! God. Mama Zita. And uh, but I don't know that that those people don't need the cops called on them. They need they need love. They Amen. need um, yeah. To see the real power of Jesus, it's it's so awesome. Like that's what I was thinking about Kevin and, and Daniel today. What they do, like they they do they they come together. They they they. Teach the word like Jesus did. You know, it said this, you know, I'm the one I was reading. I forget which one it was. John 9-11, no. Um, Luke 9-11. You know, it's like they come together, they teach, but then they go out on the streets. And it's so awesome to see the power of God demonstrated through, like, Kevin is tried and true. Like, he has, he has... He has the testimony. He has, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of the testimony, they overcome. And it's like he goes out there on the street with love. He's so full of love. I mean, sometimes you're like, Kevin, man, you're still going. You're like the Energizer Bunny. And um, he just loves. He loves. Yeah. You know, and I think that we got to, if we want that, we got to just love. You yeah. know, and, and loving people right where they're at like right. jesus hung out with the tax collectors and the sinners but he, he was didn't not sin. and, he, and sinned. he didn't sin he didn't sin right and the enemy had no landing place in him right but i even love that when kevin goes out there even with the sinners he'll have the same sinner go lay hands on somebody and they're healed that's true so you know it's not like you have to be what were you saying about perfection oh yes so um and that's actually why like i stay away from like doing videos like i i have good like a nice camera and and like to actually make nice professional videos like i'll like set up a scene or something and then i go to do the video and i just get i'm I'm too worried about making everything perfect that i don't do anything and it's a perfectionist thing and it's also i guess a root of uh the fear of man like oh letting people I, down what if i make this yeah yeah so like i guess the prophetic word rita uh a woman that i know said uh she she's she, there was a piece of carpet that was all like crinkled and um so as as the carpet's crinkled um she in her flesh wanted to go up and fix it and uh god told her no uh and spoke to her and said that uh you know like in the in that crinkle you know god will still work and in the sense of like uh, exactly like with the imperfections like god will still use you right like yeah I don't know if I said that right. But. No, but it's true. And it's yeah. like in our mind, the spirit of religion thinks that we have to go get all cleaned up and go get perfect before we can be used. And that, that keeps us away from walking in our, our identity um, as sons and daughters. Yeah. Because Jesus did it all on the cross. You know, the one thing God's showing me in this season right now is his grace. 
and you know it's not like the grace card to go and sin it's not that at all it's the grace card that he died on the cross for me it said when you were yet sinners he died right. on the cross and just because in our mind going through our circumstances we don't think that one yes that's true jordan because that's what it said that blind man yeah obedience. in john 9 11 it says you know he put the mud on him and he told him go to this certain place and wash and it says so i went and i washed and then i could see so it's our obedience that releases Mm -hmm. the manifest presence of God. It's even when we don't feel like we're good enough or that it's not perfect enough or that we're not going to measure up on the cross. He said it is finished. Yeah. And then, excuse me. one second please. <laughs> hi buddy mom they have pumpkin spice lattes there. <laughs> say hi jake jake say hi um i completely lost my train of thought we were talking about imperfection and we were yeah i know about... but there was something good i was gonna say and then i completely forgot. I'm, I'm sorry that was my son my son yeah. came home and my dog just said you're out of money jake come join us so we could see you come say hi i bought a starbucks and then we went and picked up ron and went to the uh, park for a while. No, you guys Tell her laugh. because you're on the Facebook Live as you're saying that he doesn't care. He just wants to be a voice from <laughs> a voice from the outside. Yeah. <laughs> My son. <laughs> what, Melanie? You're right. <laughs> you love it, don't you? You could follow so well. Yeah. <laughs> Do you see what she said? <laughs> ADHD. Yeah. <laughs> hey, there's many many streams. I'm detailing Evan's car on. For money. He's taking my car. Oh. How do you know? Um, okay. Steve just said hi, Jake. Hello, Steve. Oh, and Melanie, this is another commercial. commercial. We did let your puppy out. All right, I have to shower. All right. Okay. See um, have fun. I'll be, I'll be back. Later, Gator. We let your puppy out, and she just stayed on her leash and didn't yeah. do. Rita said hello, Jake. Hi. 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 <laughs> saying i don't know you don't have to be perfect i know you don't have to be perfect see this is do you have an apple watch charger i do not have an apple watch charger do you have an apple i don't watch have charger? an apple charger i wouldn't even know how to use an apple watch so rita everything's rita. good in puerto rico are you there yet amen. yes jordan we should amen yeah jordan let's do it amen amen yeah woo, woo, woo. So, um, yeah, anyhow, anyhow, I was talking, God was giving me deep revelation about his grace. And so we think that we're oh. in seasons Friday. Okay. Woohoo. Woohoo. <laughs> oh, I remembered. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, the identity, does this stop? Okay. Our identity is not on what we do or what we have done. Our identity is who, how Jesus sees us. Yeah. How Father God sees us. And when he sees us, he sees his son Jesus. Amen. So that helped me like define identity. Right. And I'll tell you this. I, I, because, yeah. Peter, Peter had said this. Peter Whitehouse had said this in one of the meetings that I was in. And it was making me cry. But he was talking about his son. And this is about God's grace. You know, we need to hear God's grace. I mean, we hear it. We see people use it. We see people abuse it. But, like, I don't know if we really have a reality of that. But as a parent... I have a reality of that and the reality is you know you train your children up you teach them the right way to go you 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 show them the way but they come to a place of accountability and they have to make their own choices mm -hmm. and they make choices as a parent you sit back and you're like oh this is not a good choice and everything's a teaching moment and mm -hmm. Peter was saying there was a time that his son was estranged and he was doing everything wrong and it was bad and when he came back, he was so happy he came back and he was ready to start new. He didn't keep record of all the wrongs he did. Right. He was so excited that his son came back home and that's all he could think about. And it reminds me of the prodigal son, you know, the father who, who released his son when his son's like, okay, I want my inheritance now. 
Right. You know, the father said, okay, son, here you go. Here it is. And he didn't give him conditions. He didn't do anything. He just gave it to him, and he knew that he was going to have to make his own choice. Because see, as our father, he gives us free will. And when his son found him, the consequences to his choices had him in like a miry pit of clay watching the pigs eat better than him. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh my gosh, like even the pigs are treated better than me, like the way I'm living. So he decided to humble himself. That humbled him. That experience humbled him. And it made him come back to his father. His father said, kill the fatted cow, bring out the robe and put the ring on his finger. My son was dead, but now he's alive. Amen. You know, and there was a rejoicing and a celebration. That's God's grace. But yet the other brother was like, Mr. Like, Perfect. And he's like, wait a minute, I did this, 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 and this. And God, you never, or, you know, Father, you never did this for me. And I, I think that's where even, when I first read it, I'm like, wait a minute. I was like, why would, but but it showed me the Father's heart. Yeah. Because, you know, he, he thinks very different than we do. And there is nothing my kids could do to make me not love them. Like, right. as their mother, I love them. And even at times whenever they're, you know, being like all of us, you know, in, walking and just doing life and things I feel as their mother pains me and hurts my heart, I love them. I will always love them. And yeah. my love's imperfect. Right. My love is so imperfect. I don't know how to love the way that God is love. Like, he is love. So, if I love my children like that, how much more right. are we loved? Right. You know, and we read the Old Testament and we see the rules and we see the, the guidelines. And the Lord had shown me that it's like offense. Like his word, his his law, it's like offense. And you know, you keep you keep your animals, you keep your kids in offense so they don't wander out get and hurt. get hurt. And so God his laws are a boundary for us. They're a fence. They're a safeguard. They keep us in a perimeter that he can keep us safe. And when we choose to go out of the perimeter, when we choose to go out of the, the guidelines, there's consequences. There's, there's devils. There's lions. There's wild beasts. There's famine. There's sword. There's pestilences. There's all this stuff outside of that safe place. And... It hurts his heart, but it, when we choose to go out of that place, mm -hmm. we have to deal with the consequences that we 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 live in. But think about it. Like I lost my dog one time, my little Chihuahua. She was four pounds. Her name was Baby. Baby. And Baby, come back. My mother-in-law was watching her, and we were going to a wrestling thing, and you know, this was a Chihuahua. So like my Chihuahua was. Well, you heard what my chihuahuas are like. Ready to eat my son and ready to eat me when I made him stop barking. Anyhow, <laughs> she didn't eat people. <laughs> she, but she wasn't like, you tell her to sit and she just looks at you. She's not like, you know. So, um, anyhow, she got out of the fence. She slipped out of the fence. And my mother-in-law lives right in a place where there is a five intersection place. Like, this dog has no hope. Like she has no hope. Like the dog is going to be roadkill. And I'm with my son, he's in junior Olympics, and I'm and I'm praying. My mother in law tells me, Baby got out and um I can't find her. And I'm like, Oh my gosh. All I kept thinking was this four pound dog is dead. Or she's going to be food for a hawk or an owl or a fox. I, yeah. I just kept thinking the worst, but I just went to prayer. I was doing a 9-11, let me tell you. And I was just praying. Love you, Lauren. I'll see you. Bless Love you. Thank you so much. Thanks for sharing. Miss you so much, too. Yeah. Um, so my mother-in-law put up signs around the place, and she gave, she was going to, you know, she's like, if you see this dog, and she put pictures up. So that whole weekend, it was cold. It was rainy. And we left on a Friday and we did not get back until a Sunday. And so they're all out looking for this dog and nobody finds anything. Well, then Dennis we. Mr. Nair's looking. Hi, Mr. Dennis. <laughs> oh, my God. How are you? Bless you. Yeah. Um, and so whenever we got back from this, this weekend endeavor, we had gotten a call that somebody found, like, saw the dog. Somebody spotted this dog. Okay, so she's out of the fence. That's the whole point. Going out of God's 
going outside of his will, going outside of his fence, going outside of his law, going outside of his commandments, you're, um, you're like this little dog. So the dog got out of the fence and now she's lost and we get a call. So we go on Monday. Now she's, she's four pounds. So she's gone Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Now it's Monday. And I, I don't know. I mean, is she starved to death? Is she hurt? I, I have no idea. She got out of the fence and I prayed, Father, please keep this dog. Don't let her die this way. Please just bring her back. Like, God, you can do anything. Send your angels and just keep her safe. And I had faith, you know, I was calling on a 911 <laughs> emergency call. So we got the call and we went and they gave us a location. So we went there and we're like all looking. And this woman's like, we're knocking on doors. And we were like, we heard that there was a sighting of this little dog. And she went and got her camera and she's like, I took a picture. I thought she was a fox. What? Yeah, because baby had a fox like appearance. Like she looked like, she's like, I thought it was a baby fox. I took a picture and I'm oh looking, God. I'm like, that's my dog. <laughs> you know, that's my dog. Well, here, what had happened is she went into somebody's garage and stayed there. And so we ended up getting her. And um, that's how it is. Like, God kept her safe. She, she, she wandered out of the fence. God kept her. Now, when we go outside of God's will, when we go outside of his laws, we, I could not protect my dog. You know what I mean? I believe God said angels and kept that dog safe. Right. Because you think about her being four pounds, you know. But God keeps us. Like, as a, as a father, he loves us so much that we have Jesus who intercedes on, us, on our behalf. And he, he goes before the Father and he prays for us. And he intercedes for us. Just like I was doing for my dog. You know right. what I mean? And so, we have this whole, this whole, like, host of heaven. A crowd of witnesses praying for us. And, and cheering us on. But yet we get stuck in the perfection of it's not good enough. I'm not good enough. Yeah, nothing I do is good enough. Right. And we forget our identity as sons and daughters. I think that we are our own worst critic. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. You so. know, so um, yeah. we have to be, re we have to, I think in the, the, the whole key to, to, to living the life that God has for us baby was it only protected by that family but they cared for him and kept him there until you got there to take over mm -hmm. the family took care of baby until we got there so god will send other people along the path yeah to help so as parents as we're praying for our children god sends messengers sends people to help bring mm -hmm. that's why we need it takes a village to raise a child, right? That's what they say. But yeah. But that's why he says that he's in our midst when there's two or three gathered in his name because it, it's, it calls down the host of heaven. I mean, he keeps us. So anyhow. Um, yeah. What, I was saying something else. What were you going to say? Nothing. I was just, I was, you finished what you were saying. I just think that we need to know who we are yes. as sons and daughters. That is key. And I think that whenever we know who we are as sons and daughters, then we can go heal the sick. We can go raise the dead. We can cast out demons. I mean, look at you guys praying. Kevin's praying for somebody as he's driving and demons are fleeing. Yeah, and we think like this has to be like this whole long deal. And it was literally like five minutes for the yoga stuff and like another thing to reconnect. Okay, back on. It was like another seven minutes for um like soul ties and like other junk so i mean like it doesn't have to be like a long drawn out thing like right. i just think um if we just truly understand our authority of who we are and, and who's yeah. in us yeah like it's not us doing it it's not us exactly yes like like uh kevin we were out to eat another time and uh, the guy beside us. Hi, my sister, by the way. I love you, Sherry. <laughs> yeah, I was really highlighted to this, this person that we sat beside. And um, so towards the end, we were talking because we're all like talking about different things about church and stuff. And this guy, we were talking about psychics. And this guy was like saying like something about like family members and didn't believe it and stuff. And so we're like talking and Kevin's like, well, can I pray for you? So Kevin started praying for this guy and these women, like you could tell they were like manifesting. They're like, 
they shouldn't be doing this here, they shouldn't be doing this here, they shouldn't be doing this here, and like, um, it was just really interesting to see that, like, my sister said, hey uh, there, Daniel. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Yeah, so, uh, hi, Ashley. <laughs> Miss you. Um, so, yeah. Hi, Ashley. Yeah, so, basically, um, it was just interesting to see, like, just just how, like, the spiritual realm is so, so real, but yet, like, if you have a, um, you know, I don't know, like, like, another thing. Someone was getting delivered, and then right before she was getting delivered, she heard laughter, really, like, like laughter in her ear and it really like every thought that we have that like is not our own thoughts like we get thoughts and then we just think they're our thoughts but really obviously the enemy is whispering in our ear right. so yeah and then it says out of the heart I mean, out of the out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks yeah yeah and so you get that in your head yeah you know let me i'll tell you a personal little thing like I applied to go to school and I, I went, I have a master's degree. I have a master's degree in theology with an emphasis on Christian counseling. I've been ordained twice. Like I have this, right? And so I, um, I was looking into getting into counseling more, but mm -hmm. I know that you have a 10 year span yeah. <laughs> where your degree, if you want to use it towards another degree, you have a 10 year span. So I did this in 2007, I graduated. And so I'm at my 10 year degree mark, like at my 10 year mark to either make this thing happen or not. And so I went through the admissions thing with Liberty and it all worked. Like they took my school, they did this, they did that. And um, my school is Summit Bible College. And so I apply and it's like, everything's going so well. Mm -hmm. And they got my transcripts and I got my letters of recommendation. I had to write a statement of purpose letter. Gosh, that's so hard because I hate talking about myself. I could talk about anybody else, but I don't want to talk about me. Right. And I had to, and I had some help. Jen and Tammy helped me edit it, and um, that was it was, friends. like, amazing, right? So the letters of recommendation was, like, made me cry. You know, and I'm like, are they talking about me? Nice. You know what I mean? Here I am saying, i got to know who you are, but yet the enemy right. whispers and said, you're not nothing. You're nothing. You're, you're less than, you know? Right. So... I, I read where they got my 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 transcripts and they're like sorry it's too old and sorry this and that and so then I'm like you talk about the spirit of rejection like I felt so rejected I felt like my life is a waste I'm a waste my degrees a waste everything I've done is a waste and I had a pity party you know woe is me and you know, here's me though with my big bold confidence saying, God, I thank you that you close doors that I'm not supposed to go through. You open doors that I'm supposed to go through. And when the door shut, why did, why did I let the enemy beat me up and lie to me and say, cause you're worthless. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I did, I had a few days of crying about that. And then I finally got myself back together and I'm like, God, you hold my life in your hands. Like you hold my future in your, your, your hands and you love me. And so, you know, today out of the blue, Liberty calls me again and they're like, yeah, it's the admissions department and we're just waiting now for your other letter of recommendation. Well, when I read that my transcripts weren't good enough, I got a hold of the other person that was supposed to do my letter of recommendation. I'm like, just forget it. I'm they don't like me. They don't want me. You know what I mean? And so right, then today right. they call and they're like, well, we're waiting for that other letter of recommendation before we can make our final thing. And I'm just like, okay. You know, so I minute. still don't know what's don't going on. Right. <laughs> so I don't know. But it, the, the whole thing is when we read the word, we got to know that God is for us and that, hi, Kim. And um, that he will fight our battles for us. He will part those Red Seas so that we can cross over to dry land, to our promised land, to the promises that he has said to us. And if he is for us, who can be against us? You know? And so I encourage you all that are still listening that today's 9-11. You know, when you have a dire need in your life, Cry out to the one who loves you, who is your father. Your, your 
his precious one. You're the one that Jesus died for while you were still a sinner, while you were still sinning. He died for you then. Mm -hmm. Not when you were all perfectly cleaned up and went to Bible college and got ordained. You know what I mean? He loved you when you were still sinning. You know, and I think that we need that even as we go out onto the streets and we love people. Some of the most powerful things I've I've had in my own personal life when I'm ministering is just a hug. Yeah. Just a hug. Yeah. And I feel the fire of God. I think the problem is there's so many people that are so caught up with the root of rejection that they put everyone else down to make themselves feel better. Yeah, that's good. That's so, true. So that's why everyone's so judgmental is because they don't really know who they are. Exactly. And that's so true. And, you know, the the Lord, there is... Okay, so if a donkey can prophesy, when the spirit of prophecy falls, if a donkey can prophesy, know that we can prophesy. All We all we all know in part, we see in part. Yeah, eagerly desire. First you know, Corinthians 14. Yeah, the gifts. But... Well, that one actually says, eagerly desire to prophesy. Okay. Mm-hmm. Read it. All right, I'll find it. But it's like, how many times are we like, eh, that's not of God, I'm not going to say anything. And we hold it, because it doesn't feel like the prophets. Right. But yet, it could be a word of life to somebody. It could be a word of encouragement to somebody who, who may need that word that moment. Okay, it says, uh, this is the NLT, it says... Let love be your highest goal, but you should also desire the spiritual ability, the spirit, the spiritual gifts, especially the ability to prophesy. Yeah. Ooh, this one's a little different. Especially the ability to prophesy. And really, what is Jesus is the spirit of prophecy himself. Right. So the more that we read the word, the more that we hide the word in our heart, the more we get to know Jesus, who is the spirit of prophecy. It says that in Revelation, Mm -hmm. that Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So it's like, you know, when you have this, this feeling or this urge over somebody, you know, and let me say that too. Like I have a spirit of discernment. The way I was telling Daniel before, I'm like, we were kidding before. It's like, Daniel, what did you feel? He's like, I felt nothing. I don't feel And I'm like, Daniel, he's like, I don't really have the spirit of prophet. I don't have the spirit of discernment. And I'm like, let me tell you, when you grow up in a dark environment, the Lord gave me this, this analogy. When you grow up in a dark environment, think about your eyes. They're shut. Like, like the guy with the mud in his eyes. Yeah, right. (laughs) He couldn't see before the mud in his eyes. So no wonder he knew how to find that place. Right. But (laughs) so whenever we're still, we're walking around in our 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 life without the light which Jesus is light so when we're walking around in our life without the light our eyes are shut and we learn how to maneuver we feel this okay we yeah. we feel this and and when we feel that this is here and this is here we know how to get to a, a safe place without obstruction and so the Lord was showing me that I've always had a spirit of discernment you know my mom had mental problems I mean Twice a year, she'd be in a mental hospital. And it was drama, drama, drama. It was scary stuff. It was stuff that you read about in the Bible with, like, crazy stuff. It was crazy. It was crazy. It was cray-cray. And being a little girl, and I didn't have the protection of a father. I didn't have the protection of a mother. I have to learn how to maneuver around. So the spirit of discernment was there. I knew when this spirit was here that I wasn't going that way. And I knew when the spirit was here, the spirit was bad and I knew what it would do and I wouldn't go that way. I learned how to maneuver in the dark with the spirit of discernment because of the way I grew up. And I was telling Daniel, I'm like, Daniel, the way that you grew up with your with your testimony, your eyes were closed in that situation and you knew not to go here because this was what was going to happen if you went here. You had that spirit of discernment. Right. And so it's like now that we have the light... And we have Jesus in us. We can see. Not only can we see clearly, we can feel. But it's that confidence to know that we're a son and a daughter. And even when you feel the spirit of discernment, when you feel a spirit on somebody and you know that there's something in them that isn't right. Like, I love it because Kevin would be like, come on, come on, come on. And I'm like, (laughs) how'd you know? Like, I didn't know. You know, (laughs) and it's like, I'm because I'm not confident in myself. I feel like I'm going to miss it. I'm not perfect. Right. I, I've not schooled that. And so I don't do How anything. How do you address the demon without hurting the person's feeling? Like that's that's a, that's something that that would always come into my thought. Like how do you address someone? Like the demon versus the person 
And but yeah, that's good. Oh my gosh, we'll be on the street and be like, come out of him, come, come out, out, out. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> right. I didn't see that. You know, <laughs> demons like, are manifesting on the streets. <laughs> right, and like in the car, but yeah. it's like it's not about anything but love. Yeah. You want that person free, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I just when I we went to the streets before. This was probably, well, this was when Jake was a baby and he was in his car seat and it was me and another friend and we were giving out blankets to the homeless, we were giving water and we were gonna take our turns. We were giving out Bibles too. And we were gonna take our turns. She got to go first and I stayed in the car with my baby and she got to, she had a Mexican person and she's, she knew a little bit of Spanish and so she got to get this guy his Bible with no problem. And I'm like, yes, it's my turn next, I can't wait. And so, I park and she's in the car now with the baby while I go and it's like right there. It's not very far and I can look over and I see her and I go over and there's this woman all wrapped up like she was wrapped up and all you could see was her eyes. Okay. And I, I brought was she a Muslim. No, she oh. was a cold homeless woman on the street oh, okay. sitting in a chair with a blanket wrapped up around her and all you could see is her eyes. Okay. So I approach her with water and blankets and a Bible and I'm like, hi, I just wanted to know if you would like some water or some blankets or some socks or anything like that. The next thing I know, she rises up out of her seat. She goes, I don't want water. I want money. You don't ever come here and you give me money, you people. And I'm like, no, oh, I'm going to die. Like, I knew that spirit. And I'm like, looking around the street like, um, help. <laughs> you know? And it's like, I recognize the spirit because, like I said, my mom had many in her. And I'm freaking out. I'm like, I I I'm going to die right now. I know it. And there's people walking past because it was probably, like, in the afternoon. And... She just goes off on this tangent, and she was a luniac. I know she was. She had many, many, many demons. I would say legions, you know, a legion of demons. And I'm like, seized with fear. Yeah. I'm seized with fear now, and I don't know what to do. So I'm just like letting her talk. I'm letting her go. And the next thing you know, I just, I'm like, in my spirit, I'm like, I'm so gonna die right now. I, 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 goodbye, Jake. I'm, um, I, I, I love you, kids. <laughs> Adios, people, you know? And because I quit talking and I just listened and I said, Lord, what do I say to this? What the heck? What am I going to do? And she just, I said, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bother you today. I'm just going to leave this and you have a good day. God bless you. And I got in the car and I was so angry. For what? Because my mom committed suicide when I was 28. And she said, I hope and pray God could forgive a demon possessed woman. And... I knew that the demons lied to her and took her life. And right. here I am, I'm faced with a woman who has these same demons in her. I recognized them by the spirit of discernment, I knew. But yet I was seized with fear and I did nothing. And I backed down and I walked away and that woman was still possessed and still had a legion of demons in her. And I, w I cried out that day, I cried the whole way home. I'm like, God, I'm so bad! Why? 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 You know, she gets the one that just gets to give them a Bible and give them the food and they're all happy and they hug, but I get the one who's ready to kill me on the street. And the Lord said that you weren't ready yet. You have many lessons you need to learn. And so uh, I probably a year or two went past from that experience and the Lord just began to teach me. I began to have dreams and he would take me into the scriptures and I would, went to different conferences and I began to get skilled and knowledgeable into the word. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I began to get set free in the areas that I am his daughter. And I'm just there to love. I'm not there to do anything but to love. And so I now, a couple years later, am in this situation where we, I had a ministry at that time called His Presence for People. What was the ministry? It was a gift bag. Mm -hmm. And there was a stuffed animal in it and a Christian book. And we just wrote in the Christian book a little message of encouragement. Mm -hmm. And I had recorded my first demo CD, so that was put in there too. And we would just give those out. Like I, I, the Lord had put it on my heart to give them to Children's Hospital. Well, how do you get into Children's Hospital? They're so tight with security. Right. And the Lord inspired in my spirit and he said, go to the chaplain. So I contacted the chaplain and he took over 250 of my bags. That's a lot. He said he gave them to the most, the most critical children there. And we began to get notes back from them. And, and they were saying how that, that touched them in a really hard, scary wow. time. And you just don't know where God's going to take you and do things. And we gave, the, we gave out so many of these gift bags, but it was called His Presence for People. So that's what we were doing. We're, we're on the street now with this family and, and McDonald. And it was a very, very impoverished family. 
it was a impoverished neighborhood. We had heard that the children were hungry, and and so we, we brought food. And we were just going to go worship God with the children, and we were just going to share the love of Jesus and give them these gift bags. And so when we got there, of course it changed. As soon as we got there, as soon as we got there, there was a swarm of flies. We could not even open our mouth to sing because the flies were there. And I'm like, oh, we know what this is. You know, who's the Lord of the flies? Right. You know, Beelzebub. Who is it? And is it, Lord of the flies. Who's the Lord of the flies? Uh, well, the flies referred to the kids. Jake had to read a book. Anyhow, commercial <laughs> again. But it's Beelzebub. So anyhow, we just began to command those flies. We, we command you to go. We know what you are doing here. Go. You're distracting. Well, then we moved to the other side of the street. The flies didn't follow us. And so somebody needed help with groceries, and we went to help them on this whole street. It's a whole street. And... We're like, would you like prayer? This one woman, she goes, no, I'm a Christian. I don't need prayer. Why do mm. Christians think they don't need prayer? I know. That's, yeah. I've been to many places of like, even the the gay pride parade. I, I've i been to, prayed for people and every single one, you know, wants prayer or wants love. But then I'd be in my own hometown to go out and ask people if they needed prayer. And, no, I just came to church. No, I just came from Bible. So it's like, well. I need, like, I, I mean, I don't know, like, yeah, we all need prayer. And that's what I told her. I said, I'm a Christian, and I need prayer. Well, when I said that, the little boy goes, there's this little boy, he's eight years old, he goes, I need prayer. And I'm like, for what, honey? What do you need prayer for? And he goes, well, because when I take my black pill, I get, I see demons in my eyes. <laughs> black pill. Well, we know what that black pill was. It's like Ritalin or something. It's for it's for ADHD or some kind of emotional pill. And he, when he would take it, he said he would saw de he would see demons. He's eight. I'm right. like, honey, where's your mommy? <laughs> you know, <laughs> because I need the authority, you know, from mom. So we go and find his mom. We're here. His mom was a stripper. She's pregnant, and she has three other, well, two other children. Same. She's pregnant with one, and then there's him. And I'm like, I went to his mom, I'm like, I told her what he said. And she goes, yeah, he has to take that because he has ADD, ADD or ADHD, ADHD or, or just something, yeah, like that. And I'm like, well, can we come in your house and pray? And can we anoint your doors and windows? Do you mind? She's like, no, come in. So there are, <laughs> I'm going in love. That's all I'm doing. I have no agenda. I don't know what's happening. All I know is this little boy sees demons in his eyes when he closes them. Mm. And so we go in the house, and there's there's me, and there's three other girls. It's all girls. And we're, you know, we, we go in, and as soon as you go in, it feels like a fun house. Like, you know how the mirrors and the rooms are all weird, and you're like, whoa. Like, spirit of discernment. Felt that. No, something not right in this house. You know, you feel it. You yeah. feel it. It feels like the walls are closing in. You, you feel it. You feel it. And so I'm looking around, and I'm seeing all this occultic symbolism i'm seeing all these things i'm seeing tarot cards i'm seeing this i'm just seeing all kinds of stuff and he takes me up to his room and he's like this is my favorite video and it's a vampire movie and i'm like oh honey no life is in the blood like vampires suck the blood life is in the blood you you shouldn't watch these you know and so i'm like let's pray for you so we pray for him and his mom's in the back of us and he's he's eight so he's gone you know Two minutes later, he's gone. Yeah. But something I said by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Mom is sobbing now. His mother is sobbing. So then we gather around her and we start to pray for her. I don't know what to pray. I don't even know why I'm here, really. I, this doesn't look like his presence for people ministry. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I just start praying in my heavenly language. I start praying in my prayer language. And I'm praying, and I'm praying in my prayer language, and we're all gathered around, and one of the girls are playing the guitar. We're gathered around this little boy, I mean this mom, and I'm praying. I'm like, Now what's starting to happen is I'm shouting. And I'm like, And I'm shouting at this, this mom. <laughs> and the next thing I know, she gets slain in the Holy Spirit. She goes out. She goes out. Wow. You know, she goes down. I mean down. And she's pregnant. Now she's convulsing. And she's the demon manifested. Oh, she's manifesting. And the little girl's screaming. What did you do to my mommy? Oh my and I'm gosh. like, ah, I didn't do nothing to your mommy. You know? <laughs> and it's a zoo. It's a zoo. And 
um, one of the girls takes the little girl and she's like, oh honey, this is Jesus. Jesus is touching your mom. And another one of the girls, I'm like, go anoint the windows and the doors. And the other girl's playing. And, and I'm just praying in the spirit. And she finally calms down. Now she's passed out. And I'm like, I hope she didn't hurt the baby because she's pregnant. You know what I mean? And right. it's just all this stuff happening. And we don't even know when she got slain in the spirit, just by me praying in tongues and manifested, I'm like, we're looking around with our eyes like this. We're going, Jesus is real. <laughs> I know. It's like, oh, Jesus is real. It's a awakening. Jesus like, is so real. Oh my gosh. And so it was probably like a good hour and she comes to and she's rubbing her head and she's like, what happened? She goes, I feel drunk. <laughs> you know? And we're laughing and she's going, I saw them leave. And I'm like, well, what did you see leave? And she's like, I saw the black figures leave. And they said, don't go through with this. Don't go through with this because we will be back. And then we're like, under it, push under it. <laughs> we start praying for her again, you know? And so she, she got slain again. She went back down. Really? Out again. She slumped back down. I don't know, you know, like I said, I didn't know. We were just going, Jesus is real. So then we start praying for her, Father. Fill her with the Holy Spirit. God, we thank you, Father. Fill her with the Holy Spirit. And we're saying your name. We're saying, receive the Holy Spirit right now. You can hear us by your spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. And we're just praying like that. Yeah. Probably like four hours later, this was like a heavy day to do thing. She was sitting there long enough for us to just talk, and we, she accepted the Lord as her Savior. And so we all left. Everything was calm. Well, we went back the next day to check on her. Mm -hmm. And she said, oh, my gosh, wait until you hear what happened. Yeah. So we were taking her money. We were taking her food. I had his presence for people had a booth at the fair, and we raised, like, I think we had $200 that we were giving her. And we gave it to her, and she broke down crying immediately. She's like, oh, I was praying I didn't have money for my kids for school, and now I can get them stuff for school. Thank you so much. And just that little bit meant so much to her. So now I'm, like, talking to her boyfriend, and her boyfriend's like, you got to hear what happened last night. And we're like, what? What? <laughs> Did we do something wrong? Right. And um, he said, she started talking in this unknown language, in the middle of the night. She got filled, she got filled she with got the filled spirit, with spirit. And those nice. demons tried to come back. Uh, so she was praying against it. Yep. Wow. And so then we began to pray for him. He's crying. He gets saved. Now her little five-year-old that said, what did you do to my mommy? She's crying and she got saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. And it was so much of a victory. And the Lord said, remember when you had the, that luniac? Mm -hmm. Remember? Yeah. He goes, I've prepared you for this day. Yeah. And I had no idea what was happening. Yeah. So, like, our whole thing back to the beginning is you can walk on that crooked little rug <laughs> and not, not know what you're doing because it's not you. you. It's Holy Spirit. Yeah. With that, I want to ask, um, Ashley Hahn, is there anything you would like prayer for? Is there anything we could pray for you? Anxiety? Anything? I'll just wait a couple of minutes. It's 9-11 today. Is it really 9 one one? It's 9-11 right now? No, the day. I know. Oh, yeah. That's... Look, Jake. Guess what our message is? 9-11. Good. 9-11. When we were driving through Robinson. Okay. I almost yelled at uh, Ikea. They weren't at half -star. I'm thinking. Okay. Yeah. I want one? What do you want? Thank you. That means a lot. She's thinking. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Ashley Hahn's a good friend. Or, you know, I haven't seen her in years, but she was always fun. Aww. So, yeah. She's thinking. <laughs> Ashley, don't take this to heart. Your mom. <laughs> okay. I don't know what that means, but I'm laughing. It's an inside joke. Okay, I figured. Yeah. Where are they going? I'm going to get my, my pen. Oh, that must... Tech spare bag? Oh, you want a his presence? Okay, you want a his presence for peop his presence for people bag? Haha, <laughs> I'm sitting here laughing. <laughs> right. Yeah, I knew that would make you laugh. Did you? I did. I did. <laughs> so. Okay, Tara. I'll see what I can do. For you know, I actually hung that ministry up. A while ago. Did you? I did. And so, um, but God used it it's mightily. It's hanging on the coat rack? It's hanging on the coat rack. God used it mightily. 
it really, I mean, we used to go into nursing homes and like it went to Bear Foundation. Come on, buddy. Like for children that were getting adopted or in crisis situations, it went to the Airport Crisis Pregnancy Center. My so. new job starts Wednesday. Pray that it goes well. Okay. Hold on, I'll see something. Do, 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 do. <laughs> She's gonna deny you. Probably. She's like, oh, no. <laughs> gonna get denied. Are you thinking? She's so thinking. <laughs> inviting. He's inviting someone so we could pray for her. Sorry. What is, what is the, what is, this is a test. This is a test of the emergency broadcasting system. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hi, <laughs> Ashley. Hi, Ashley. How are you? I honestly thought about like declining because I just got out of the shower. So I was like, oh. Right. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys? Wonderful. Good. So this is my friend, Candy. So Candy, nice to Ashley. meet you, Ashley. Hi. You. <laughs> Thank you for accepting us. Yeah, right. Or accepting him. Yeah. I'm just like the piggybacking. Uh, <laughs> so this is actually my first time actually inviting someone. So thanks for being the very first person. I know. I didn't even know that you could do this. So this is kind of cool. Uh, <laughs> we learn something new every day. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool. So this is interesting. All right. Well, we're going to pray for you. Okay. 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 All right. Uh, I'll go first. Okay. All right, so Father God, in Jesus' name, I just thank you for Ashley. I thank you for um, who you made her to be, God. I thank you for uh, the plans and purpose that you have for her. God, I thank you that uh, I thank you that she's beautiful inside and out. Lord, I just pray, God, that you just show her how valuable she is. God, I pray when she looks in the mirror, there will be no flaws. God, I pray that when she, she just, yeah, I just pray, God, that you just completely invade her life. God, I pray you just show her uh, your goodness over her. God, I ask for your favor to fall on her, your grace to fall on her. And uh, Lord, I just um, pray that you have favor for her. If she's supposed to get this job, God, I pray you open that door. If she's not supposed to have that door, God, I pray that the door will shut. And I pray a better door will open. God, I pray just for your favor in Jesus' name. Amen. And Ashley, whenever um, I, I was praying for you, I just saw, um, you know, like at like um, like a point where there's like a water fountain and the water just flows up out of that pool of water. Yeah. And I saw you as that water fountain. Like God has surrounded you with his living water. And like there's this, this energy that comes up from you. It's just this, this beautiful um, ascending waterfall, cascading waterfall. And people look at you and you know how people throw coins in and they make wishes. Yeah. Well, when they come upon you and your life it's like they they say wow god if you did that for her you can do that for me you, you have a testimony you, testimony you have a testimony your life and what god has brought you through and where you're at will make other people inspired to want to wish for greater things in their own life and hope for more things in their own life because as they look upon you they're gonna make a wish and um you're going to, you're going to direct them to God and you're going to direct them to his plans for their lives. So I just see God using you mightily, um, as a, as he's going to draw people to you and your testimony is going to bring inspiration and courage to other people to wish for more than what they have ever wished for before. <laughs> so that's what I see. So thank you. That was so sweet. <laughs> hey, hey, Ashley. Yeah. How do you feel about your cousin hop hopping on here? I Emily. just saw that, like, all the people on my friends list are, like, watching. But I didn't Hi, even Jason. know that you could I'm do sorry. that either. Another one. Hi, Jason. How are you? Who's Jason? That He is Josh's friend, and he is um, in the Air Force. Oh, nice. So thank you. Thank you um, for watching out for my son. <laughs> and I'm glad that you're feeling better, by the way. So yay, God. So, Ashley, what's new and exciting? Um, I graduated cosmetology and I just, um, completed my boards and I passed, um, I think that was Thursday, Thursday, I passed my boards and Wednesday, 
Um, I start my new job at the Wax Center in Cranberry. So we'll see where that wow. goes. That's in, that's yeah. awesome. Yay, God. Yeah. That's um, better than working at uh, Jenny, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's awesome. We'll pray for a favor, definitely. Thank well, you. Yeah, thanks for accepting, and it was good talking to you, and uh, love to connect with you soon. Like, Yeah, sure. You know, outside thanks of Facebook land. <laughs> Thank you, Ashley. It's nice meeting you. And you I can't too. wait to hear all these testimonies that God's going to use your life, and yay yeah, God. <laughs> He's Me already too. using it. You are a, like, you are such a blessing and, and you're beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. 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 See you later. <laughs> Actually, you still see us. <laughs> I know. So I want to tell Jason, Jason, thank you for keeping my son under control. No, you're such a blessing. Thank you for looking out and loving him and being with him and so. keeping him under control. <laughs> so, and I just, I'm praying for you guys. Just know that we're praying for you to, you know, yeah. uh, keep strong and mentally and physically as you're going through test school right now. So anything else? What else? I don't know. So anyone need prayer? Anyone or? need prayer? Because like what we just did with Ashley, we could do that with you if you are bold and brave enough to accept our invitation. So <laughs> if you want prayer, just say me. Just say me. <laughs> so, and while you're thinking about that, I wanna we're we're gonna pray. Hi Terry, love you. Um, we're gonna pray for 9/11. Yeah, yeah, for the families. You yeah. know what I mean? Because I'm sure every. You know, there's things that are seasonal, and when it comes upon a certain season, you remember and you have like those 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 memories yeah, it's relived. Yeah, trauma, really. It is. It's trauma needs broken. So we're gonna pray for the as we wind this down. We're gonna pray for the um, trauma. all the people who were affected one way or another. Yeah. Um, on 9/11. Yes. So. All right. So. You get to go first. Okay, I'll go. Hi, first. Emily. All right, so, uh, Tracy sent a video. Okay, so, all right, so, Father God, in Jesus' name, I just thank you for this life. I thank you for this day, that we get to be a part of this day. Um, but, Father, right now, I just ask that we can lift up uh, every person that was uh, impacted by the the World Trade Center's, um, uh, you know, collapsing. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus um, for the families um, that are impacted. God, I pray that, that you remove all the trauma that this carries. God, I pray that somehow, some way, that this could be turned around and used for your glory. I don't know how, but I just ask you, God, to do it. And God, I just pray, God, that um, you just expose also any lies that have to do with 9-11. And God, I just pray, God, that... that um, yeah, I just pray for justice for the people that lost their lives and justice, yeah, for the family members in Jesus' name. Yeah, Father, and we just even thank you right now for every first responder. Um, every first responder even right now, God. It was the first responders uh, on 9-11 who were the ones who paid the greatest price. So, Father, we pray right now for your angelic protection over first responders. The first responders that have been affected and have been um, um, at the front lines in Texas. The first responders that are on the front lines right now in um, Florida and, and Puerto Rico Jesus. and all the islands, God. We just thank you for your angelic host to just be released, Father. And minister with first responders, God. We pray for our military. We pray for them as they're serving our country so that we can walk in freedom. We pray for all the ones, Father God, that have paid such a price. And we just pray for your protection over their families and over their lives, God. And we just thank you, Father, that as we remember today, as we remember and we reflect upon the price and the sacrifice that was paid for our freedom, God, so that we have freedom of speech, so that we could sit here and we could pray and we can lift your name up and, and not be killed or put in prison, Father. We thank you for the men and women who have sacrificed so much and their families, God, that you will go before them, the ones that are deployed, the ones that are serving, the ones that are learning, the ones that are in deployment, the ones that are... Um, fighting on the front lines, the ones that are learning in schools, the ones that are in boot camp, Father. Just 
Go before them and encounter them, Father. Encounter them with your presence. Release your angels to minister to them hope, to minister strength, to minister all that they need, Father. Mm. You know the needs before people even ask. So, Father, I just pray right now for just like your blanket of glory to just cover, Father. The, the glory of the knowledge of you, Father, to be released upon our first responders, upon our people who serve, upon the men and women who give so much yeah. and sacrifice so much so that we can live in freedom, Father. Bless them in Bless Jesus' them. name. I also want to give God glory for, like, breaking up the the hurricane. Yeah, like, yeah. my sister's in Florida, and I just thank God. Like, I truly believe it's an answer of prayer of just all of that storm, like, completely, like, Becoming a Category 1. Yes, like, thank I think, you, God. That uh, is a miracle, and it's the power of prayer. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. When we pray, mm -hmm. there is power. When two or three are gathered in his name, he's in their midst. Yeah. So he loves the prayers of his people. Jesus. I know. <laughs> Amen. So, thank you, God. Barb uh, has some prayer requests. Okay. Um, so, do you want me to start? You can you start. start. Okay. Hi, Barb. So, Father, we just thank you right now for Barb, God. We thank you for giving her the strength to, to decide to go through and have knee replacement, Father. And we just pray, Father God, even as she's had this, Lord, that you just relieve the stiffness. Just massage it, Father. <laughs> Supernaturally massage it. And um, go before her and just touch her, Father God. Touch her. We command pain to go, Father. We just pray, Father God, that you... Bring your healing balm of Gilead and cover her, Father, as she is recovering um, for her knee replacement. And help her as she does physical therapy. Help her have the strength to go on when she doesn't feel like going on, God. Just show her. Give her a glimpse, Father. Give her a vision of running through fields with you. Mm. And give her a vision of of walking and and just rejoicing and leaping and shouting and dancing, God. Just give her, give her the... Um, the download of, you know, knowing what the end result of this is going to be, Father. So we thank you right now for your healing virtue in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. And I just thank you for it, Lord. I thank you. Um, I thank you for technology, God. You say two or more, you're in the midst, God. And I just thank you for agreeing with uh, Candy and, and believing by, by the authority given through us through Jesus Christ uh, for that completely to be recovered, uh, joint be restored in the name of Jesus. I command um, just uh, just any uh, any spirits that are attached from the uh, surgery from from yeah just all trauma infirmity affliction to go in the name of Jesus and I just pray uh, yeah just for pain to go uh, all pain to go uh, in Yeshua's name. Amen. Hi Wesley and hi Cindy. How are you? Um, Good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Does anybody else have any prayer that you would like? And if you do, if we send you an invitation, would you like to hop on here so we could pray for you? Yeah. What's the joke? Um, uh, knock, I don't, knock, I don't knock, knock, knock. Who's there? At sh At you. God bless you. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Comedy hour. Icebreaker. Holy Spirit is my rock. <laughs> no, no. Father God is my rock. Holy Spirit flow. <laughs> Jesus loves you and he can save your soul. Ooh, ooh, Thank ooh. you. The words about the long Lord has used over and over. Praise God. Amen. Good having surgery in October. Cindy, do you want to hop on? Can we send you an invitation so we could pray for you live? Or do you just want us to pray for you hidden? <laughs> I, don't, I don't even see her. Oh, you know what? Because she's not your friend. Oh, okay. She's so my friend. She's your friend. Okay, well, unless you friend Daniel, we'll just pray for you hidden. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> you got to friend him. I always wondered how that works. Like the plus six on the side. I guess the plus six are not your friends. I guess. Oh, you should half, be his friend. Half the people are not my friends. <laughs> you need more friends. <laughs> okay. So, oh my gosh. Hi, Terry. I, I wish I could hear you laughing right now. I wish I could, you could friend him so I could hear you laughing. I love your laugh. Okay. Yours too, Cindy. I mean, if we could hear both of your laughs, we'd be cracking up right now. Yeah. For real. Okay. They have the best laughs, both of them. So, you start with Cindy. All right. What's the name? She's getting surgery, right? Yeah. All right. So, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, God, um, 
If it's your will, God, I ask. Well, if it's your will. It is your will. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just speak uh, resurrection life over uh, her body. Whatever the circumstances is, God, I pray for resurrection life. I pray for every cell in her body to be restored. Um, God, I even ask that, that she can be uh, completely restored. That when she goes to get surgery, they say you don't need surgery, God. Father, I ask these things in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you for Cindy. I thank you. I just see alignment, God. You are aligning things in her life, Father. And even though she's having a physical back surgery, God, I see an alignment. I see you putting things in order so that there is a straightening, a straightening in her life, Father. So I thank you to go before her, to touch the surgeons, to just administer your healing power, Yeshua, as she as she goes under and has this procedure done, Father. And I pray for quick and quick recovery in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. We thank you. Um, if anyone on here, uh, like Ash, if you don't if you want to know why I'm saying or we say Yahshua, it's the same name as Jesus, only it's the Hebrew name of Jesus. And it's Joshua also and it's yeah. Jehovah saves. Yeah. So How's, how fun is that when we say that? We say Jehovah saves every time. Bam, <laughs> we say bam. Yeshua. Yeshua. <laughs> Plus it's fun to say it. Say it. Yeshua. 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 My son's name is Yeshua. Yeshua. My son's name's Joshua. Yeah. So. Jesus. Joshua. Yeshua. Jehovah saves. <laughs> 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 I love Joshua. Okay. Is there anyone else that needs prayer? We're right on here. Don't be, Don't be so shy. Don't make me get my accent out. Oh, it's coming. <laughs> there is, there is. Is it Iris this time? No. Hmm. Let me think. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to embarrass my children well. No, no, no. Okay, so. No, 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 no. So nobody wants prayer. Okay, well. That's hmm. all she wrote, folks, no. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Right 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 so, okay, so nobody wants prayer, so we just bless you. Thank you for watching us, and thank you for your words of encouragement. If you want us to keep doing videos and being quirky, just thank you for the encouragement for um, showing up and hanging out we with us. We got one. Okay. We got a fish biting. Ah, <laughs> Jason! You know, Jason's with my son. Okay. Okay. Just cut news. I may have a blood clot or nerve damage stemming from my hands. I find the results tomorrow. Pray for that would be great. Okay, All right, well, Jason. Is Jason not my friend? Jason is my friend. So okay, well, will you start and then I'll pray too? All right. Well, I will start. Yeah. All right. So Jason, um, what's wrong with it? He has a blood clot. Where exactly is that blood clot? Where's the blood clot, Jason? Yeah, where's Where are they saying it? Kevin's holding the, holding the fort down. Um, yeah, so where is that? Uh, uh, specifically. Specifically. Jason, you know, I'm getting mad at the enemy. He's messing with you, and I don't like it. Okay, it's in my... What's the Calf. Thing? Calf. Possibly. Okay. So, that's... so the enemy's trying to affect the way you walk. Okay, so... I want you to put your hand right where you think it is, okay? All right, and as you do that, I'm going to just invite the presence of God. Thank so, you. come Holy Spirit. Yes, come Lord. Come Holy Spirit. Thank you. Can we just acknowledge you right now? Thank you, come Holy Lord. Spirit. Thank you. All right, so right now in the name of Jesus, I speak to the blood clot right now, and I command that to completely dissolve. Yes. I command the, the, the blood to flow completely normal. Any of the blockage, you must go in the name of Jesus. Yes. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So right now, in the name of Jesus, I just command complete healing right now over your body. In Jesus' name. Amen. Your turn. And Father, I thank you for Jason. I thank you for his family, Father. I thank you, God, that you have purposed his path before him, that you have made his path straight, Father. And I thank you that you have a future for him. 
You have promises and you have hope for him, Father. And we say no more enemy. We plead the blood over his life right now. We speak life into his body. And we thank you, Father. We thank you for complete healing in his body, Father. We thank you that the enemy will not be able to have permission to, to cause any more health issues in Jason's body. In Jesus' name, yes, we thank you that you are healer. You are deliverer. You are redeemer and you are restorer. And we thank you, Father, for all that you've done in his life. And we thank you, Father, for what you're going to do in his life, Father. And we thank you that he feel. Jason, do you feel anything right now in your body? Like, I'm feeling the yes, fire of the Holy Spirit like, over you yeah. right now. Do you feel do anything? Do you feel anything? Like anything, like tingling or, or heat. All right, uh, waiting. And it's okay if you don't feel It's okay. Anything. You could say no if you don't. But yeah. I just feel, I feel the fire. As, as, as um, Daniel was praying for you, I felt it. I felt <laughs> the fire being released over you. So, God, we just say more, 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 yes, God. More of doing, your Father. Holy Spirit to just hover over him. Even, Father, let this be a testimony that no weapon of hell can prosper against Jason's life in Jesus' name. I thank you that what you have called him to do, Father, he has a purpose, he has a destiny, he is a mighty man of God. And I thank you, Father, I thank you, Amen. Lord, that by the word of his testimony and the blood of the Lamb, he will overcome this, God, because you have paid the price for his healing. So I just thank you in Jesus' name. Yes. So not, said, yet. not yet. yet, but Aww. I feel love. All right, well, can you... Whenever you go to the doctors, can you can you let us know uh, what the results are? Yeah. That would be cool. Yeah. And I even just pray, even as you sleep tonight, that you will have just a peaceful night's rest and that you're going to just, you're you're going to feel God's presence on you and he's just going to minister to you. He's yeah. going to minister songs of deliverance over you and you're going to wake up with a song. Jesus. <laughs> okay. So, okay. Uh, Amen. That's a wrap. Okay, well, any last words? you guys want to say anything? Okay. Somebody was saying something. Wait, I didn't know. I saw something on here. Somebody said candy and they spelled my name wrong. Candy bar. So anybody else have any prayer before we go? I thought somebody said something. I thought I saw my name on here, but maybe I'm seeing Yo, who's saying yo? Christy Lynn, yo. Sorry. Wait, why sorry? Why are you saying sorry, Ashley? Yo, sorry. Yo, sorry. It's all 911. Oh. oh. Bam. 911. Pain on right side. Okay. Uh, pain on right side. Bye, Barb. Bye, Barb. For Christy Lynn. Oh, that's okay, anymore. Ashley. That's okay. Oh. I didn't know that was yours. Sorry. That's okay. Thumbs up. That happens. Right. Thumbs up. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, okay. That's what happened. Okay, so we're praying for Christy Lynn. Okay, pain on right side. Okay, so right now in the name of Jesus, by the authority given through, given to us through Jesus Christ, we command uh, any 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 affliction that's hindering the right side. We command that to go. Father, I ask right now for your presence to fall on her right now. Come, Holy Spirit, and release your kingdom right now. So, Father, right now, I thank you for it. I thank you for what you're doing. I say more. I command all pain, all affliction, all trauma, all infirmity to leave your body now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let us know if anything's going on, if you would. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And Christy Lynn, I'm, I'm hearing open doors for you. I don't know if there's a circumstance right now going on in your life, but I just I just heard the Lord say, He's opening doors for you. And when God opens a door, no man can shut it. And when He shuts a door, no man can open it. So I just thank you right now for Christy Lynn, God. And I pray right now for the open door that you have for her, Father. And that she'll know that she knows that she's to go through it, and that there will not be any fear. There's fear over you, Christy Lynn. I feel there's fear that you're afraid that you're going to make the wrong choice. And I just hear open doors. So when God opens that door, you just go through it and trust in him that he has made a way where there was no way. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Do you still have pain, Christy? 
and it's okay if you do. I mean, just we like honesty. We don't, yeah, we don't, it's okay. We don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't want like, oh yeah, I'm good, and then you're not good. That's not good. Right. <laughs> so. Hi, Heather, and thank you. Yes. Thank you for Thanks, coming on. Heather. How are you doing, girl? Tell your mama I said hi, and I love her. Tell your whole family I said hi. I love and miss you guys. I can't believe you guys are all still watching us. It's 9-11, <laughs> you know. I know. 9-11 on 9-11. Right. Is it? Is it still 9-11? Well, I'm sure it's like 9-12 by now, but... <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably. Or 9-15. All right. Does anybody else need prayer? Christy Lynn Daniel was waiting to see if anything was going on with you. Yeah. Like, do you still have pain? Move around. Check it out. Aw, good. I miss you guys. Christy Lynn. Okay, what'd she say? Amen. What's this, alcohol? Alcoholism, okay. permanently. Okay, so, Father, uh, when there's pain, seeks pleasure. So, Father, I ask you to um, be with Christy's dad. I ask you, Father, that you heal his heart from whatever it is that he's trying to cover up, God. God, I ask you to heal his heart right now, Father, in Jesus' name. And, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus for alcoholism to go in Jesus' name. To always having to run to that to cover up something. Lord, I just pray right now in the name of Jesus for that to go. In Jesus' name. Father, I pray that when he, instead of running to alcohol, he'll run to your goodness. God, I pray for your goodness to shower over him right now. It's your goodness that leads us to repentance. It's not someone saying, you're an alcoholic. No. So, Father, I just pray in the name of Jesus that you just show how much you love him in your presence and and I just pray that other people around him can just love him the way he needs to be loved in Jesus' name. Amen. And Christy Lynn, this might be crazy, but I'm just going to go. We were talking about this earlier, about just going with it. So I was hearing Ernie, and then I was hearing Bert. And I'm like, okay, whatever that is. Ernie and Bert. And then I thought Sesame Street. But then the Lord was just telling me to hang on, that sunny days are ahead. You mm -hmm. know, Sunny days, taking the clouds away. On my way to where the air is clear is what I heard you know what I mean and so just trust in the promises of God get into the word and just begin to speak life into your dad and just expect it expect God to move and that there are gonna be sunny days ahead and that God is gonna set your dad free in Jesus name in Jesus name okay anything no let's pray for my dad Thanks. Oh, amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. Do you want me to start? Or Go you want... for it. Okay, so Father, I thank you for um, Dave, God. I thank you for him, and I just ask right now, Lord. Father, I thank you that this family is a praying family, and they have surrounded him with love. But Father, there's an orphan spirit in Dave. He doesn't know whose son he is. He just kind of wanders around because he doesn't have that understanding of knowing he is the king of kings son. And there's an orphan spirit on his, his heart. And so even as his heart is dealing with issues, Father, there's also issues of the heart. And because of the issues of the heart, he's turning to a numbing thing to fill that void. He's, he's drinking and, and the smoking and the, the, the things have gotten a hold of him. So I just pray right now, Father, that you reveal yourself to him, Father. Even as you can reveal yourself to Muslims and they see you and they confess the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you that every tongue will confess the name of Jesus. Every knee will bow. I thank you that Dave's knee will bow and his tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. I thank you for setting him free. I thank you for the years and years of prayer that have gone up before him. Yes, sir. And I thank you for the cloud of the great cloud of witnesses that are cheering him on and cheering this family on for the faith to keep 
believing and being positive that in this time, in the day, the land of the living, they will see this thing come to pass. I decree it right now that in the land of the living, they will see their prayers come into a fulfillment, Lord, of the many years that they have prayed and planted seeds, believing for Dave's breakthrough in Jesus' name. So I just thank you for that encounter, God. Yes. I thank you for that encounter with Holy Spirit to truly touch Dave in a way that he will never be the same again in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And Father, I also lift up uh, Heather's dad, that you set him free uh, from anything that's, any any spirit that's not the Holy Spirit, I bind it and commit it all to go. Uh, like anything, like just, I, I know it sounds crazy, but like a spirit of death, I just, I break that off in Jesus' name. Yeah. And uh, Father, I just pray that you heal his heart, whether it be physical or, or, or um, spiritual, God, I just ask you to heal his heart. And God, I just pray the same thing, that, that you uh, go in deep and heal deep, deep wounds uh, and all trauma. I command trauma to go. Spirit of trauma, leave in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. So, yeah. Eight, eight, eight is uh, new beginning. So. Amen. Oh, now we're at nine. And you're right, Christy, there is a delay. There is a delay. There's actually a 10 second delay. So when we speak it, there's literally one, two, three, four, five, six, well, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Yeah. What does that say? That's how much there's a delay. That was probably pretty. Look, you just see me counting. <laughs> I know, we look at my glasses. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you want to end this look, thing? Yeah, I do. Okay, do. yeah, me too. It's getting, getting a little rough here. Oh. I got to talk in my accent before we end. <laughs> oh, it's coming. How you doing? Thank You're welcome. It's an honor. It thank, is an honor. Thank you for allowing us. Yeah. So, love you, Heather. Thank God for Give your mom a big, huge hug from me and tell her I love her and that I miss you guys. So, yeah. And then tell her to give you a hug, too, from me. So, <laughs> so everyone on here that... Uh, read that. Read that. Okay. Pray for... Adrian Park. Adrian Park has had several cancer. Severe. For, severe cancer for the number of years and has young kids. She's had it for a number of years. Oh, uh, okay. Adrian. Adrian. So, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we just speak life, life over Adrian and we command cancer to leave. Every cell be restored in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Amen. All right. So, I want to say, everyone on here uh, that's on here, thank you for. for spending the time to listen to us and it's an honor that we get to have technology too to just connect without being together and um love you guys yeah so, thank you we've missed you we've missed being on here but yeah one thing after another and ashley i miss you so so god bless you guys too and thank you so much yeah love you all bye bye who's your friend where you guys go to church